over 40 years, onboard cameras have bringing you into the thick of F1 action. Now, these cameras are technical marvels in themselves, but in this tech talk, we're gonna be here at the F1 Media and Technology Center, and we're gonna look not just at the cameras, but also into the TV production that brings the pictures from these cameras onto your TV while you're watching the race. Well, this is probably the most recognizable camera on the car, what fans call the T-cam, but there's lots of other cameras on the car. Let's just take a look through and see exactly which ones we do have, because you may forget quite how many we have on the Formula One car. On the front, the first set, you have the nose cameras, give us that lovely low view of the circuit and of the front wing, which is quite important for us techies. Then on the top of the chassis, you have the 360 camera. You then have the driver facing camera as well mounted here. Then the T cam, as we've spoken about, and what they often will call the chassis cameras on either side of the cockpit structure. And then you also have this new one here at the back, which they're calling the wrist camera, RIS for the rear impact structure, where you effectively see the tail light, which will give you those fantastic rear views of the car. So to look at the tech inside these camera units, we sent our own cameras down to the onboard camera unit here at F1 HQ to speak to Head of Operations, Dino Leone. This is one of the most recognisable parts that we fit to the Formula One cars. We call it an OCU, that stands for Onboard Communication Unit. Here's a clear one that we can have a talk through. Starting from the back, we've got a rear facing camera here with an image processor sitting just behind it. Importantly, the teams also use this for receiving and transmitting data. So the teams set up their car via the telemetry on this antenna, and also the teams talk to their pit box via this, the rear antenna. And all the video comes back through the front antenna on 10 gigahertz. The forward facing camera is basically the same as a rear facer, just looking in a different direction. So we have a camera unit here. There is the clear fill mechanism, which sits between the rear video processor and the camera itself. But the analogy we use is, when cars were invented, uh, they invented windscreen wipers. They still use windscreen wipers. There's something quite good about what we use. Uh, we use a polyester film. It's a clear polyester film, which I have here. Um, it's loaded onto a cassette. It has a delivery spool and a retrieve spool. And literally, with the telemetry, we just command that from our broadcast centre here in Biggin Hill. This cassette sits in the camera horizontally, like this, and often you'll notice that the screen clears from top to bottom. That's this film being pulled around from the top to the bottom, like so which pulls through tyre rubber, leaves, dirt, rain, whatever it needs to be, and keeps the screen clean. We have tried numerous different technologies, but the clear polyester film seems to be the most efficient. We have the ability to switch from one camera to another from our broadcast centre here in Biggin Hill, um, depending on what the director is looking at. The helmet camera, which, we, uh, which we've been using now for a couple of years, um, has been developed in collaboration with the helmet manufacturers and all the helmet manufacturers. So it isn't just one brand, it fits in all different helmets. There's several different companies that produce helmets for the drivers uh, and the system that we've got can be fitted to any one of those helmets. The camera sits just here to the right hand side of the driver's eyes. Uh, it produces some brilliant shots which, uh, which are just not repeatable anywhere else. The driver turning the head left and right, the movement, the vibration that, that the cameras quite cleverly remove, the driver's head can't. So what it does show is how much force, how much effort is required by the driver to keep the car going in a straight line and all from this one little camera which is connected via this cable here. Every team has their connections in different ways. Ultimately, the video comes into the camera. There's a processor in the side of the helmet, which, which we fit at, at the track. It's connected via a cable. That cable can either connect to the car and the side of the, of the, side of the driver. So when the driver gets in, they will then, the engineer or the mechanic will connect the cable to the chassis loom. Or some of the teams have the loom inside a race suit. So it's connected to the driver from the outset, then when they plug their radio in, it's all connected. When the helmet's down, we get slight colour change. And we spend a lot of time at the broadcast centre trying to sort that out live. So we can control that from Biggin Hill, getting the colours just right. It's a bit of a problem. Each driver has a different coloured visor or different race conditions, different driving conditions. It's constantly evolving and, and the control of the camera is all done live from the UK. We also have the face view camera, which sits on the top of the car, just underneath the halo. It sits just behind the car's windscreen, but the teams make a little cutout for it so we can get a clear view of the driver's helmet. Um, we've been using this for quite a long time now, so we use this in conjunction with everything else. We can use this with a picture-in-picture, picture. we can use this as a standalone shot. You know, it looks great at the end of a race when the driver's won and he's lifting his visor up. We love it when the driver lifts the visor up, you see the eyes, you can see the emotion, all of that from this little camera. The gyroscopic camera is something that's being developed. It's a very interesting project. It offers us an awful lot of possibilities. It was originally thought as a concept for Zandvoort with the banking, 
It has a sensor that, that allows us to play with the stabilization settings on the fly. So we can increase the rate at which the gyroscopic effect happens. We can decrease that rate. We can increase the rate of movement within the camera. Those cameras have been used elsewhere, but what we've found and what the people that manufacture that camera have found is that there's nothing quite as hostile as a Formula One car. So what works elsewhere doesn't work on a Formula One car. So we're working to make things more robust, more reliable, in the same way as the team's technologies goes into road cars, our technologies go into camera development, um, and that's what's happening with it. The 360 camera is another area we're working on at the moment. Um, it's not broadcast live. Uh, we're working on that, but that is getting developed. We have a separate camera here. Uh, the 360 lens is on top. It produces an image that's completely warped. Some people may have 360 cameras at home that they've used. Um, they'll understand what that is. So this records everything, 270 degrees vertically and 360 degrees horizontally. After a session, we then remove that footage, download it and send it to our post-production team who then very, very cleverly manipulate it into what we can see as post-race edits and what's used on social media. And it's an incredibly powerful tool. It has its own microphone, it has its own power supply, it has its own recording media. So there have been certain instances in the past where there's been a heavy accident. Maybe the power supply from the cars come away, been broken, the system, the camera may have been broken off, as happens. The 360 camera stays and it carries on recording. And it's, it's a very powerful tool. So the normal cameras are powered from what we call a power conditioner. In real terms, it's a clever battery. And it allows the system to power up from either the overhead in the team's garages, the car's power, or a small battery within the power conditioner itself in case of an accident where the car power cuts off. So we have like a 15, 20 minute window where the camera can carry on transmitting whilst the car's stationary. It's kind of like a clever unit as well. So it's what tells the car system where it is. When it's in the garage um, and the team's plug their umbilical in for all their data comms and for their communications, the power conditioner tells our system, I'm in the garage. So we're using Teams power from the overhead. When they unplug it, the car says, the power conditioner tells the system, I'm unplugged now, start using car power. The Teams will, st will start the car and we start using car power. Then when it's out on track, it's using car power. If the car then stops, the power conditioner switches to another mode which says, car stopped, needs to use battery. All of this happens without any kind of glitches. So it's, it's a seamless transition from overhead to car to battery power. So how the system works, we have, a, we have the power conditioner powering up the whole system. It also powers up what we call an FIU, which is an interface unit, a Formula One interface unit. Um, this is kind of like the brains of the operation. So all the signals come through here and come out of here. Even the cameras themselves that have a camera mounted next to the transmitter, before the image from the camera goes out through the antenna, it has to travel through the car's harness, through the FIU, and back out through the antenna to then be broadcast to the ground-based receive sites. Why do we do that? Well, there's audio engineering in here, so we can then control the audio to a certain extent. We can adjust the left and right bias, we can adjust the gain, we can adjust some basic audio parameters, but most importantly, everything's recorded in here. So even if the footage isn't broadcast live, it is recorded within this unit. When the car's pushed back into the garage and the team's plug in the umbilical, the footage is sucked out of the FIU straight back to the broadcast center so it can be used in a replay. So we talked earlier about having four or five different cameras on the car at any one time. All of those cameras are being recorded within this unit. So even if it isn't broadcast, something happens behind, it's in here. If something happens in front, it's in here. We can then get that footage. It can be retrieved during the session, after the session, automatically or by downloading it ourselves. Um, that's all held within this unit. It's a very powerful bit of equipment. So with regards to the audio, we've developed our own microphones. Um, we work in conjunction with some, some quite well-known microphone manufacturers and we've produced our own housing, our own heat-proof designs, which allow us to fit these microphones very close to the car's exhausts, um, very close to the car's radiators. So we get a good combination of engine noise, power unit noise, exhaust noise, and all of that's amalgamated within our control unit, which sits on the car, to produce a balanced audio. We've only got two microphones at the moment. Watch this space, there may be more microphones coming.